Is it possible to beat Genshin Impact in 24 hours? And what do I mean by beat? Is it to complete all Archon Quest, or is it by reaching a certain adventure rank? And what about the Spiral Abyss? Can you beat the Spiral Abyss in just 24 hours? Normally, beating the Spiral Abyss in this time frame would be impossible. But at the time of recording, we have New Vlad's banner, and his banner was completely stacked. If for some reason, I could get every single character in this banner, that would solve any team comp issues, which would make this challenge somewhat possible. Now granted, this challenge requires me to win the 50-50, an insane amount of luck to get all of the 4 star characters on the banner. But since we do have backup options, such as Lisa replacing Fischl, Barbara replacing Sinchu, and Lynette replacing Diona, as long as I get Nibelette, there is a really good chance I could complete this challenge in record time. This was one of the hardest challenge I have to deal with, so if you enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, why not consider dropping a like and a sub. But otherwise, let's get straight into the challenge. Timer starts once we open the door. We will be choosing Ether due to his faster movement speed, which helps us save time on this challenge. Once Ether saves Paimon from drowning in a nearby river, we proceed to move for the first time. Is it just me, or is this spawning location really dark for some reason? Once I unlock my unable powers, I proceeded to move towards my start. After getting Ember and opening a nearby statue of the Seven, I reached Adventure Rank 5 and fought the Valing for the first time, which leads us to unlocking the most important feature of this game, Gamble. Okay, so we have 11. Alright, let's just do a 10 wish here. 10 wish. Let's see, let's see what happens, right? Surely, not gold. It would be crazy if it was gold, but nah, it was not. Ah, that's not a good start already. Alright, so the bigger the better, let's just go for it. Okay, so Noel is guaranteed. Oh! Oh! Wow! Wow! 6 star Archon right off the bat! And I'm pretty sure I can still get some fates here, so... Alright, 11... 12... 13... 14... Hello there! What?! What is this?! No way! No! <laughs> no way! Oh, that's so funny, dude! Okay, well, I mean, I'm gonna continue the account either way. So, straight. <laughs> what do I say to this? After accidentally getting Diluc at Adventure Rank 5, I proceeded to complete the first Archon Quest. I did Ember's Domain using Diluc, I did Kaya's Domain using Diluc, and I did Lisa's Domain using, you guessed it, Kaya. Yeah. Once the first Archon Quest was completed, I went straight into Animal Killer's collection. During this time, I went to Dragon Spine to unlock the Frostbearing Tree, which granted some quick Adventure Rank XP the moment you unlock it. And yes, I did get the Purple Artifact from Stevens, which granted HP main stats, which I still used since there's nothing better to equip for the time being. Getting the statue to level 4 sets us to Adventure Rank 8, which I promptly used the resin for some quick AR XP. Combine this with doing various handbook tasks and collecting additional animaculars, I was able to reach Adventure Rank 10 one hour into the challenge, which the first thing I did was to redeem codes for Primal Gems and Free Wishes before proceeding into another set of wishes. That's it for Noel's banner, everything else we just throw it into the normal banner. Alright, so I want to see you all official. Ooh, yes, yes, alright. Wow, wow. Ask and you shall receive. Right, that's really good. Okay, so I'm actually gonna kick Dilu out of the party on this one. So now we've got like a quick superconduct team. Yeah, like that. And if I need Ember for any pyro stuff, then yeah, there we go. So this is going to be my team for basically the rest of the map. Right. Oh. Okay, that's good, because all of the 4 stars in this banner is really good, so... I mean, I already got banned though, so it's, it's really hard to beat it, but still. Alright, so we should get the purple here. Yep, okay, so that's the purple. And what do we have here? Ooh, a Dendro character. She's gonna be pretty good for the Dendro team with Nibelette. Well, I'm not too sure, but it's good to have the option. After getting Diona and Kirara from my AR-10 wishes, I then started the next quest only to be blocked by the hardest obstacle I have to face in Genshin Impact. Getting the Knights of Favonius teleport waypoint without dying. Oyovus, why did you change this ledge to make it nearly impossible to climb? You had no reason to do this. Back in version 1.0, this ledge was climbable. Why Bruh. change this now? I almost died twice getting this teleport waypoint, and I knew that this ledge was going to cause issue. Even Kirara the mountain climber can't even climb this. How are we supposed to get this? 
Yes, I know you're meant to climb the other side, but why would you do this? Literally unplayable. These fix and sent apologems. Okay, I was half joking. I wasn't actually serious about this, but it would be greatly appreciated if this was fixed. Aside from facing the hardest Genshin Impact challenge, I went to claim Adventure Rank Rewards to give Kaya a much needed upgrade in the form of the prototype Rancor. I then collected a 4-star artifact from Victoria during the Archon quest, but I proceeded to borrow the Holy Liar the Hamel only to be stolen by a Sister Mage. I would like to also point out that this is the only time in the entire Genshin Impact storyline where a Sister Mage did an actual useful teleport. We then went to a Fertui hideout to get the Liar back and went to Ramon's start to collect teardrop crystals only for Venti to be revealed to be Barbados during the final cutscene ending the Archon quest with us reaching Adventure Rank 13. Do keep in mind that during all of this, I was still collecting animal killers whenever I got close to them to increase both stamina and Adventure Rank XP. The next Archon quest unlocks at Adventure Rank 18, and you have to get there as quickly as possible. There are a few options to get there. Palm animal killers, do story quest, do road quest, do trance domains, do adventure handbook quest, open chest, do commissions, and so on. Since Adventure Rank 12 unlocked commissions, I went ahead and completed them, but not before doing Ember's Trounce Domain. Do note that your first batch of commissions will always be the same. There will be a commission with Timmy just outside my start, a commission near Thousand Winds Temple where you kill some shielded Hidi Trolls, a commission just south of Dawn Winery where you have to kill some Cryo Spines, but most importantly, there will be a commission near Cecilia Garden where you have to kill an Abyss Mage. This is important since 99% of the players when doing the Abyss Mage commission will most likely go to Womandom, then to this teleport waypoint over here, then unlock Cecilia Garden before doing the actual commission, which grants you enough AR XP to get a quick adventure rank up just by doing your first story quest. Speaking of which, Ember's story quest was a bombing simulator which we saw once and never saw this type of gameplay again. Combining this with leveling up the statue, I was able to reach Adventure Rank 15 in record time. I then went to do more ley lines and commissions since it's now day 2 of the challenge to reach AR16 before working my way through any available Monstar content. Starting off with Kaya's story quest, then Lisa's story quest, getting Monstar's statue of the 7 to level 9, and finally Xiangling's story quest, which was enough to hit both AR17 and 18 respectively. During this time, I leveled up my Kaya to level 40 just to give myself an easier time going through the story quest. And with the memes out of the way, it is now time to continue the Archon quest. This is where we unlock Storm Terrors there and enter it for the first time. Aside from the fact that Wenty, Diluc, and Jean did absolutely nothing while we broke the seal to Storm Terror, there was one question I had in mind while doing this Archon quest. Can I one cycle Storm Terror with my current team comp? Oh. Okay, that's a bit slow. Alright, better first. Fischl, Kaya, Supercon Dark. Alright, and everything else, just Kaya. Oh, okay, nah, we got this. We got this. Yes! Saved us two minutes of our life. Yo, let's go. 10 out of 10 gameplay. <laughs> and just like that, one start was saved and everyone lived happily ever after. Other than the fact that Wendy got slapped by a Harbinger, of course. <laughs> Ending our Monstar journey at Adventure Rank 19. Since the next Archon quest is stocked behind AR23, we now have to shift our focus to other activities to increase XP output. Starting off with Lisa's Trans Domain, which got us straight to AR20 before using some of my resin on upgrading Kaya. This was a great opportunity to upgrade other characters as well, as a good amount of Adventure Handbook quests are gated behind upgrading characters, which completing these quests grants additional AR XP. Do keep in mind of the Embattled section of the Adventure Handbook, which grants materials for both the Prototype 1 Core and Fermonius Wobble, the latter being obtainable by defeating Storm Terror during the Archon Quest. I also use this time to clear any available events since most events are gated behind AR20. And even if you don't do them for the Primal Gems, they do give a good amount of resources which helps save the amount of resin you have to use. Once the events are out of the way, I continue to grind XP through Story Quest. Diluc's Story Quest is available the moment you complete Monstar's Archon Quest, and Razor's Story Quest is available once you reach AR21, which after completing Diluc's Story Quest, I use this time to collect chests and animal killers in Storm Terrors there, and unlock the Spiral Abyss to reach level 10 Statue of the 7 and meet the requirements for Razor's Story Quest. 
Razor Story Quest marks as the gateway to a weekly boss fight. This is not to be confused by the wolf fight in the story quest since it's relatively underleveled. While the weekly version of this fight is significantly harder, at least from the Adventure Rank 21 standpoint. But since we have better in our team, we pretty much steamrolled this boss fight and got a Claymore billet as an additional reward. This is where I realized Storm Terror's weekly boss fight is gated behind AR25 and I had to figure something else to raise my adventure rank. Since I was at adventure rank 21, I went to do the final trans domain in one start, which just so happened to give enough AR XP for adventure rank 22. And since I didn't feel like hunting for chests in one start, I decided to go to the rare and start collecting jokulas. This was a process which took about 4 hours. But by the end of it, I was able to collect 130 jokulas, which is enough to max the Liria Statue of the Seven and Grunter's Max Stamina. During this time, I got the cooking recipe for the Adeptus Temptation, started and completed the Chi of Your Rogue Quest, and even started and completed the Nine Pillars Rogue Quest. Do note that this fight in particular, I used Barbara since the mobs have Pyro buffs, which Hydro was able to remove. Aurora is obtainable once you defeat Storm Terror during the Archon Quest. But since I don't have the footage of me getting Barbara, I have to replace it with some background footage of. <laughs> once the Rune Hunter was defeated, I went to claim my rewards, which granted both Adventure Rank 25 and our first Golden Artifacts 10 hours into the challenge. So we are now AR25, which allows us to continue the Archon Quest. But AR25 also marks the ability to raise our characters to level 50. So I took some time to buy various items from the souvenir shop in one star in the rare, farmed for treasure insignias, for two insignias, and the weapon essential domain in the rare to get both Kaya and the prototype one core to level 50. I also used this time to replace some artifacts for our characters and here were the results. Alright so as you can see here Kaya is my most well built character with Fischl, Bennett, Barbara and Geo MC just as a secondary character. Everyone else I'm not building at the moment since we only need four people. For Kaya, he's running Protoc Run Core R1 since it's really easy to build physical DPS Kaya. And then we've got 4 piece Berserker. You can have a look at the stats real quick. It's all geared on attack and physical damage at the moment, but this will change as we get more character. Fischl on the other hand running Fevoir Bow and then the artifacts. Nothing too crazy, just more support and survival based and none of the stuff is leveled up. Same goes to Bandit, if you go over here, it's pretty much the same build. The stuff, none of it is built at all. Same goes to Barbara as well. Just everything is just same build whatsoever. Not into crazy. And then the weapons, we have the Train Tails and then Skyrider Sword for the ER and the Bow for the ER as well. The next hour or so was spent to complete the Rare's Archon Quest. AR25 unlocks the first two the Rare Archon Quest, with the final one being unlocked at AR28. Since there was no incentive to raise the adventure rank immediately, I decided to stay at my current adventure level to complete the quest as quickly as possible. During this quest, I forgot to claim Lynette, so I did it while saving Li Dang from the Ember he was trapped in. And aside from the Rune Hunter fight with Dusky Ming, I was able to clear the first Liria Archon quest with minimal issues. There wasn't much to say about the second Liria Archon quest, except the fact that it starts inside Northland Bank, which I used this opportunity to collect the 200,000 Mora chest within the area. Once the second Liria Archon quest was completed, I used this time to make some quick upgrades to Fischl and Bennett to tackle Liria's Trans Domain. But for some reason, instead of doing the extra domain, I decided to use the primal gems that I've got to do some rolls. So we are looking for Sing Chiu. We just need one Sing Chiu. Can I get Sing Chiu? So it should be the last one. Should be the very last one. Unless we get it early. No, last one. No! Ah, oh, okay. You still have one more chance though. So if I don't get it, then forget it. See you on Fischl though. Sure. Oh, okay, yep, so this is 25, yeah, 25. Okay, that's actually not bad, not bad. So if I can get Sing Chiu, then that's actually pretty good, but... Oh, that's so hard, dude. All right, so here we have 10, so I saved up for 10. All right, come on, come on. Okay, it doesn't really matter. I want Sing Chiu. No, oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. Ah, what is this, man? Alright, so this will make it to 30. Alright, so let's see. I do have quite a lot from the achievements tab though. So as you can see, we have like plenty everywhere. So if we just claim all these, we should have like enough for like one to two more. A few moments later. Okay, so that was all of it. And again, wow, okay, sure. I believe this is seven for purple. Yep. And then eight, nine. Uh, so we won away then. 
If we don't get the purple. Oh, we got the purple. Oh, what is it? What is it? Come on, Sing Chiu. Show off. Yes. 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 Okay, I got the Sing Chiu with the Sex Sword as well. That's massive. After somehow getting both Sing Chiu and the Sex Sword, I immediately leveled him up and his weapon and sent him straight into our exploration team. With this newfound power, I went and did the Ascension Domain and promptly cleared the Rare Strouds Domain with minimal issues. As our team is now much stronger, I tackled Storm Terrace Domain and cleared it with just one cycle, reaching Adventure Rank 27 in the process. Since we are now halfway through the challenge, I decided to take my chances with the Abyss and see how far I can go. Using Kaya, Fischl, Sinchu, and Bennett, I was able to clear floors 1 to 3 with 9 stars. Floor 4, however, I was only able to get 8 stars since there's too oh many Hydro Abyss Majors, which prevented a 3 star clear. I was really happy with the progress thus far since floors 5 and beyond requires two functional teams and I can tell you straight away I wasn't able to clear it anytime soon. This was also the time where I worked on Adventure Handbook Quest and cleared Dada Upa Luxurious Chest both contributing to additional XP and another claim of billet. Once this was done, I went and did Sing Chiu's Story Quest but not before claiming Xiangling and Kolei or clearing their respective requirements. During it, I went ahead and did the AR-27 Trunks Domain and killed the Primo Jovi Shaft since killing the Primo Jovi Shaft runs 250 AR XP. At this stage, I was really close to AR-28 so I decided to make a quick trip to Dragon's Spine and activated the Statue of the Seven which now sets us to AR-28. The journey to the Rare's Archon Quest is one of the more interesting ones. We met Ke Ching and Ning Guang for the first time, fought Child within the Golden Chamber and engaged in a fight against Osayo which I can only describe as Wait, what? And I guess Zhongli revealed themselves as the Geo Archon, like no one has seen it coming, which wraps up the Li Rest Archon quest. I then spent the next bit of time to deal with Li Rest the Reputation quest, since unlocking level 3 rewards grants access to Contents Resin. We then face off against the Abyss with Dane Steve Super. to the next Archon quest, but not before hitting AR-29 in the process. This is where we go around Teyvat to chase after an Abyss Herald before reuniting with our dear sibling, who promptly abandoned us in the middle of nowhere. A tragic tale, but it is one we must go through for us to move on to Inazuma. I spent the next 15 minutes doing the Serenity Teapot quest, only to find out that finishing it grants no AR XP whatsoever. So I decided to do Chapter 1 Interlude instead, which involved Shen He and the rebuilding of the Jade Chamber. Aside from realizing that Shen He is a really good cryo buffer, the fight with the sea monster was a lot more interesting than the Osaya one. But once the fight was done, the interlude quest was completed, sending us to AR-30, thus beginning the Inazuma arc. We're not ready, since you have to go through Beidou's tournament before actually setting foot in Inazuma. Beidou's tournament fight serves as an introductory point to Inazuma characters, namely Kazuha. But aside from decimating the people in the tournament using No Element Traveler, Inazuma's prologue Archon Quest was eventually completed. AR30 increases our level limit to 60, so I took some time to gather various materials to make the required upgrades to our party members. This ranged from collecting local specialties to spending resin on essential materials, while also spending some time farming monsters around Teyvat to gather monster level up materials to perform various upgrades to different characters. During all of this, I took some time to do the AR-30 Trans Domain for some extra XP. Since it's now the next day, I took some time to do commissions which got me to AR-31 and once our characters are sufficiently leveled up, it is now time to do Inazuma's Archon Quest. Since Adventure Rank 30 unlocks the entirety of the Inazuma questline, you can just simply do the entire quest with no problem. As such, I spent the next 3 hours and 35 minutes jumping through dialogue to complete the entirety of Inazuma's Archon Quest. I do want to give a quick shout out to the Raiden Shogun's test with Yai Miko since that was a pain in the ass to complete and I had to resort using Ember and avoid getting burnt by grass in order to complete it. But aside from the memes with Yai Miko's test, I got myself all the way to Adventure Rank 34 by just doing Inazuma's Archon Quest. With 2 hours and 15 minutes left on the clock, I decided to work on Act 2 Chapter 4 which takes place in the chasm. This was probably one of the rougher quests due to the amount of extra content you have to go through in order to unlock the actual quest. To unlock the Archon quest, you must go to the above ground chasm to unlock the actual chasm, then go through the multiple areas within the underground chasm to get to the point where you can start the actual quest. 
I tried to be a smart ass and glitch out of the area to get to the quest spot early, but I got debated by the quest because you have to actually unlock the area to progressing the road quest before you can actually trigger the quest. Not to mention, you are forced to get lumen stones to upgrade the lumen stone gadget, otherwise you could not remove the oozing concretions to progress the road quest. Not to mention that during the quest itself, you have to face off a few of these heralds, who is immune to Hydro, which wasted quite a lot of time since it practically renders C2 useless during these particular fights. But eventually, I was able to complete the Archon quest and reach Adventure Rank 35. And since I only had a few minutes left, I decided to collect as many proper gems as I can, collect any rewards I have yet to claim, and conclude my 24 hour challenge. So, as you can see here, I don't have a lot of time left. So let's just go to the account real quick. So as you can see, we are now AR35. We are now up to the Sumeru Road Quest. We're going to enter Sumeru soon. Character wise, we still ha haven't had much change. The only thing is Kaya is now level 70, but everything else remains unchanged. So if you look at the weapon, it's 60, 60, 50, and 50, still the same. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, why not consider dropping a like and a sub. We're gonna do 50 hours next time. And the only thing left is we are just gonna go do a 10 wish. See if we get new roulette and let's do this. Oh, no way. No way. I can't believe it. Wow, that was early PD. Early PD. We got double PD in this 24 hours. That is insane. <laughs> Yo, let's go! Oh my god, no way! No freaking way! What a great way to end the video, man! Oh my god! Oh my god! I cannot believe it! My mind has been blown! <laughs> I was not expecting anything as well. Wow, crazy! Alright, oh god, alright, I'm done with the video. It's time to edit.